Hey guys, welcome back to the Office Industrial Connection Show. I've got another great Collier's brother uh, in the co-working side and uh, just had a great webinar uh, that he put on with a lot of great operators and so I wanted to make sure that we had him come on. And so, Francesco, appreciate you coming on, sir. How you doing? I'm good, Cody. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, no, man. Hey, I appreciate it. So, uh, I want you to give us some takeaways uh, real quick um, from that What's Next for Flex webinar uh, that you did last week. It was really good. Had some really good key insights and, and people with, uh, you know, the Serendipity Labs uh, owner and whatnot. What were, some of the, what were some of the main takeaways that you saw on that one? Yeah. So I'd say a couple things. You know, first and foremost, I think – we're all working remotely and it's evident that that's not going to change anytime soon. And so occupiers by and large operators are starting to realize that that's going to be a significant part of the real estate strategy is remote driven work. And so how do you as an occupier provide really maximize, maximize the amount of choice that you give employer, uh, your employees in terms of where and when they can work? Right. So I think a lot of the conventional norms around where and when employees should work is being flipped on its head. And so operators are sort of starting to respond to that by providing new solutions for how occupiers um, can provide more flexibility to their employee bases, not only in the form of fixed, flexible workspaces, you know, and maybe key hubs around uh, the, the, the country, but also in you know, suburban networks. So I'd say that was a big, a big one. The other the other one I'll leave you with is I think. Um, what, what, what I'd say is it, more integration between building owners and operators in terms of how they offer a unified solution to the occupier. And so we had a, we had an owner operator on there at Tishman Spire talk about the advantages of owning and operating the same building. Um, and we had operators talk about the benefit of really more closely aligning with landlords to provide a co-working solution to an occupier as part of an integrated offering. And so I think those are two big key takeaways. Interesting. So yeah, so Francesco is, uh, you know, with Colliers International, part of our occupier services and the, you know, the flexible co-working uh, king of Colliers. And so, uh, you know, that's a avenue that, you know, I know I've been talking with you about that we've been working with several people, not just in Texas, but all over that own the real estate and looking to expand. And, you know, a lot of those we've temporarily put on hold uh, on the investment sales side uh, for some of those guys. But um, you know, as of right now, you know, out here in Texas, I know it's a little different than, you know, a lot of other states. And so things move a little faster uh, out here, it seems like. But what do you think, not just for guys out here, but, um, and I was actually going to get your take on this. So I was actually talking to an operator out here that runs several locations and they've yeah. spent, they've spent the last almost two months, uh, you know, since the lockdown happened. And now that we've got unlocked and people are going back to work, they spent the last two months basically just marketing like crazy to all these other, uh, you know, to the, to the users and clients of all these other operators that, you know, were leasing other co-working spaces. They've been marketing to all those guys to recapture that audience uh, as doors started to open back up. And so uh, what do you think uh, as a co-working operator, uh, what should a lot of those guys be doing right now moving forward? Uh, kind yeah. of in an overall sense. It doesn't have to be just area specific. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I think first and foremost, the, the baseline fundamentals right now for operators is how to, how to communicate effectively with your occupiers, both your current occupiers as well as prospective occupiers. That you're taking the right steps, uh, right steps around health and safety to keep people safe. Right. I mean, that's that's baseline number one. And if you, if you don't have a, a you know, a covid reentry strategy, if you don't have health and safety standards that you've communicated, that, that's priority number one. Um, moving beyond some of that, those baseline fundamentals, I think uh, you, you, you hit on a couple things that I think are interesting. One is there are a lot of operators out there struggling right now, and there are a lot of operators out there who are looking to expand. And so the ones who are looking to expand can seek out opportunities to find building owners who currently have operators in their buildings that may be suffering from financial health or looking to shut down locations. And so how can you come in and, 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 and be a new partner to a landlord in a maybe a more sustainable model um, to, to be their partner? The, the second I'd say is um, really focus on 
as, as you think about what companies want right now, they want beyond safety around health and hygiene. Uh, they, 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 they want to move away largely from open floor co-working uh, settings. And they want increasingly contained private dedicated space still in offered on flexible terms as a managed product. And so how could you refit your current spaces to create some more dedicated spaces, private suites, uh, fully managed, fully contained suites that really um, help occupiers retain a little bit more control than they otherwise would maybe in a traditional co-working environment. Gotcha. You know, that's, it's unique. I mean, you know, I, I know what's great about you is, uh, and what you do for Collier's, I mean, you know, the, you know, co-working flexible workspace, not just on a local scale, but on a national scale and even a lot more on a global scale than, you know, a lot of other folks. And so is, is you're working with a lot of these guys and talking to these uh, companies really all over that are either franchisees, independent operators. What are some of the hottest areas that you see for growth uh, as far as the co-working side goes? Because I don't know if you saw that stat, um, I think Paul yours had out that was, you know, over the past two some odd years, you know, the DFW area out here where I'm at has expanded nearly 200% uh, on yep. the co-working yep. side. And so uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, I know several of the operators out here that we're working with on, looking at sale leasebacks, you know, some of those guys are looking to expand in new locations. And so what are some of the hottest areas that you see for the operators coming into that are going to be expanding uh, on in yeah. the U.S.? Besides yeah. DFW, which is the number one in my mind. DFW is up there. Uh, I would look, I think co-working follows economic activity. Uh, and so wh where you have the highest levels of population growth and you know, uh, new businesses, uh, you know, being started, new flows of venture capital coming in benefit the, the most relative to, to others. I'd say with that being said, a lot of the big gateway cities, cities like San Francisco, cities like New York, by and large, are, are, are pretty saturated from a co-working standpoint. And so I, to me, the biggest opportunities right now, especially if you think about the direction in terms of where people might be moving and out of cities into the suburbs based on everything that's happening with the pandemic and some of the population trends of the last few years, the, 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 the darling child markets, in my opinion, are some of the secondary and tertiary cities that are experiencing a strong growth. Markets like Austin, Raleigh, Nashville, Charlotte, even to some extent, you know, Atlanta, it's a larger one, Tampa, Orlando, these places where a lot of the millennials are frankly leaving big cities because they, they're too expensive. They get more space and those, these, you know, these people are starting companies, right? And there isn't a lot of co-working saturation yet in some of these secondary markets. So to me, those, those are, that's, that's where we're going to see the big next wave. Interesting. And I, and I believe that. I believe that. You know, I, I do want to ask you, since, you know, me and my guys here, we're mostly on the investment sales side. I mean, what would you say, and not just because of the growth of, you know, the co-working side, but um, what do you think are some of the positives? Uh, and even, I mean, you can label some of the negatives of people looking to invest in co-working leased office buildings. So, you know, as we're working on, you know, selling some of these or some of the investors out of state that are looking at buying buildings that are leased by co-working, what do you think are some of the advantages uh, that a lot of those guys can look at? Because that is one thing that, uh, you know, it's getting easier, but, you know, many, many years ago, selling a uh, co-working style building or, you know, a building where an independent ran a uh, executive suite, that was something that, you know, some investors were not always sold on. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I think first and foremost, the trend is accelerating towards an increasing share of the market being in co-working and flex. And it's not for any other reason than because occupiers want flexibility, right? And so if that doesn't change, and if in fact, in many say that's accelerating because of, of, of COVID, right? If anything, occupiers today have more uncertainty around near and medium term headcount than they've ever had before. And so they don't want to sign long-term leases. And so as more and more companies feel that way, um, co-working and flexible workspace assets provide an alternative. And so while demand over the next six to 12 months is gonna likely be slower as, as the sh for, for both co-working and traditional assets alike, 
I think a disproportionate share of the market over the next six to 12 months is going to go towards uh, uh, landlords offering flexible terms, whether that's through a co-working situation or co-working center or through more le- flexibility be built into existing lease agreements. So I, I think the world's heading that direction. And so I think ultimately investors will benefit. And th- the other thing I'd say is, you know, people less and less so want to buy a big empty box. They want to buy an experience. They want to buy a serviced office. They want to buy. And so buildings that can, that are highly managed and experiential and provide services uh, are buildings that I think are going to thrive in, 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 in in the next uh in the next wave I, and i uh you know couldn't agree more i know you know with the office everybody's asking about amenities and how to you know amenitize some of these buildings and you know i'm going to tell you so we were actually working with a large company it wasn't co-working it was just a uh, large company that had a call center um out here in north texas and we were looking at doing a sale lease back for them um, you know, they had about 500 employees in the building. Um, you know, I want to say it was probably about 145,000 square feet. So before COVID hit, we had given them the valuation and that, you know, as COVID came here, they had to send a lot of their folks home. And so they said, Hey, let's put a hold on that. And so we did. And, uh, you know, I just talked to those guys last week and they said, look, we don't need nearly that much, you know, space that we once had. And they actually said that they are sending quite a few of their people uh, to work at a, you know, co-working, uh, business or, you know, really just to work from home or offsite. And so, um, you know, I think some of those things will hurt parts of the general office market. Um, but some of those things I think will also benefit the co-working side as well as, is, you know, the engine gets back moving, um, uh, and not just out here in Dallas Fort Worth, but you know, it, it could, it'll be something that you'll probably see across the U S and, and even outside of the U S. And so I don't know if that's, uh, something that you've seen, but and work with some of these larger companies that occupy a lot of space out here, and it, that have been the traditional office space, you know, style of little cubes and and whatnot. Uh, it looks like many of those guys were forced to, you know, learn about new technologies, readapt, and and you know, uh, some of them outsourced, you know, certain aspects of their business, and so I think you're seeing a uh, change in office, just really general office, really right before our eyes over the past 30, 60, 90 days and moving forward. And um, I think it'll be very interesting to see throughout the rest of the year. I don't know if that's what you've kind of seen or heard or experienced, but. Um, yeah, I look, I look, I'd say one of the things I'm most interested to see how it plays out is how landlords are also going to um, pivot their fundamentals to offer flexible workspaces themselves, right? And yeah. one of the speakers we had on the webinar was, was Ty Scully, who manages Tishman Spire's large studio brand. And um, I think a lot of people are going to watch closely to see how that plays out. There are other players that are doing this, Brookfield, uh, Boston Properties, Heinz, Blackstone. So I think as some of the larger players who have, frankly, larger war chests and bigger, bigger amounts of funds to, to spend on R&D, uh, tinker with a do-it-yourself model. Uh, a lot of this, the, the, the small and mid-sized landlords are going to be watching to see if that's an alternative to also working with an operator themselves. Yeah, no, and, and I agree with that. So tell us um, real quick, you know, what do you do here at Collier's and on the co-working side? Give us a good overview of what, of what, of what you do here. Yeah. So uh, I work in our occupier solutions group. Uh, and so simply put, my job is to advise our occupier solutions, our enterprise clients on all things flexible workspace from running transactions and selecting the best operator based on where they're looking to, to deploy an office to portfolio strategy tools around how to think about where and when flexibility makes sense or flexible workspace makes sense within the broader context of their portfolio. And so, uh, you know, I wake up every day working with some of our largest clients, thinking through how to have how to really help them leverage and push flex. So, have you been? Uh, I mean, with the whole COVID thing, I guess you've been doing it all from the house, though, haven't you? Not moving around as much. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm like everyone else. You know, thankfully, um, I'm uh, I got I got some green space where I am, but uh, I'm looking forward to to getting back. And I have to say, I think, you know, 
like I'm reading a lot of sort of I'm reading a lot about and I'm talking to a lot of companies who are interested in in co-working in the suburbs and currently I'm, I'm positioned out in the suburbs and I'd love to work at a co-working uh, office down the street once I'm allowed to oh wow yeah well you know Texas we reopened back up so me and the guys were we're back here at the office. We never really left, but, uh, but yeah, no, things are, uh, looking doesn't better. look like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, things are looking better and better down here. So my man, I, I know you're split for time and I really do appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, I'll make sure and have your contact info, but, uh, I always appreciate your insights and, uh, you know, uh, me and several of the guys here, we love, you know, some of the co-working stuff that we work on. A lot of our stuff's general office and industrial investments, but, uh, we've started shifting more and more into that field. Uh, over the past few years. And uh, man, I'm excited for it. Uh, I think there's a very, very bright future for it. And, um, and and we like we like the product a lot. Awesome. Well, look, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it.